Hello and welcome back to another video in the world of Monster Hunter. Today is all about the Sword and Shield build progression. And this is actually one of my most unused weapons despite how good it actually is. And it is certainly the best mounting weapon in the game despite those aerial insect nose users. Anyway, let's dive straight in into it so first of all we're going to be using the baroth sword and shield along with odegaran helm alpha raphalos male beta odegaran van braces alpha odegaran coil beta raphalos greaves alpha i'm going to utilize the handicraft charm here just to try and get a little bit more of that blue sharpness now the reason we're going to be using the baroth club for the majority of this is quite simply because early game it is absolutely bloody powerful and it does last you into end game although once you get into some of the later game sets it does become obsolete but it is still a strong choice just in case rng is not on your side after a few elder dragons and you might also notice i'm adding the elementless jewel 2 in straight away simply because this decoration seems pretty easy to get but no gigante helm alpha raffalos male beta kaiser van braces beta no gigante coil beta and no gigante greaves beta again handicraft charm don't forget to add in that attack decoration now if you're really wanting to get a bit of master's touch pretty darn early you can go with something along the lines of this although beware the 76% uh, affinity doesn't really account for much and we're subsidizing that with handicraft level 5 although this build does hit as well as the other it's generally not particularly worth it unless you're planning on farming the living crap out of Bayamoth just so that you could work towards the uh, end levels otherwise I would actually just suggest decking out the previous build that will probably serve you just as well you're just not going to get that master's touch so it depends on how you want to work it and it is very decoration dependent which means RNG once you have your Draken armor, it doesn't really take too much to max this weapon out with a few augments. Draken 4 piece, no Gigante Helm Alpha, 3 Tenderizers, an Elementless Deco and you're pretty much good to go. I've added in an Unscathed Charm just for more damage and augments are, well they're basically all the ones you should go for. I'd recommend going with Health Before Affinity unless you're some sort of pro. Now it is at this point where the Baroth Club kind of becomes obsolete and going for something along the lines of this would be much more worthwhile, especially in multiplayer and if your team is set up to take advantage of it. Barn Claw 3, this gives you a decent amount of damage as well as putting the monster to sleep. Draken Alpha Helmet, Empress Male Beta. Draken Van Braces Alpha, Draken Coil, Draken Greaves and the Challenger Charm We're using Mighty, Attack, 3 Sleep, 3 Tenderizers and finally another Mighty. It is at this point where you start entering a little bit more of the heavier hitting Swords and Shields and for general purpose there are two that stand above all and it was all dependent on the monster's hit zone values for different things. Basically if it's a bit weak to Dragon you're going to want to use Fatal Bite which is the Devil Joe Sword and Shield, and if it's not particularly weak to Dragon, you go with Empress Ruin, which is the Lunastra Nergagante mashup Sword and Shield that does blast damage. So you're getting a little bit extra there. Anyway, let's have a look at a few of these builds. First up, we have Fatal Bite with an Affinity and a Health Augment. We're going to be using the Nergagante Helm Alpha with an attack decoration, 4 piece Draken, critical jewel, 2 tenderizers and a mighty. We're also using the handicraft charm. Now this is generally speaking the poverty big daddy build and also does work for the same setup. All you got to do is remove the mighty and add a health augment to the weapon and you're pretty much good to go. And from there you basically enter the two top tier sword and shield builds for the current end game meta which also do work absolutely superbly against pretty much everything i'm using the devil joe maxed out build in this video and despite the fact that i'm not too confident with sword and shield it's worked out quite darn well so this is the end game fatal bite build with an affinity and a health augment 
Draken Alpha Helmet with a Mighty Attack, Draken Mail with a Mighty, Draken Gloves with two Tenderizer, Nergigante Coil Gamma with a Challenger and an Expert, Draken Greaves Alpha with a Tenderizer and then a Handicraft Charm. This gives us 471 effective raw, 223 effective element and 100% affinity. It works beautifully, I might add. Then we have Empress Edge Ruin with a health augment and a flawless decoration. Draken Alpha Helmet with a challenger and attack. Draken Mao with a mighty. Draken Gloves with two tenderizer. Nogagante Coil Gamma again with a challenger and an attack. And Draken Greaves with a tenderizer. And we're going to be using the unscathed charm. Adding in that flawless, that gives us peak performance free. This only puts it at 99% affinity, but this weapon has a natural chunk of 50 white anyway so we're not really too bothered about that and it does have slightly higher effective raw but it will suffer against monsters that are not particularly weak to blast and fatal bite will overtake it in monsters that are weak to dragon anyway that is me thank you very much for watching if you like my content click subscribe it's free and i hope to see you guys pretty darn soon good luck have fun and don't die it's bad for the health